Hey, what's up guys? So today I wanna to talk about what it takes to build a video sharing platform. And what I mean is a platform where you can say, take a video here, drag it here. We wait a few seconds, some magic happens on the back end, and there we go. We can view that video. There's actually a lot that goes into these platforms. Let's say YouTube, for example, you can create an account, log in, upload a video, add a title, a description, customize stuff about your channel. There's comments and likes and subscriptions. By the way, please subscribe to my channel. There's all these things that go into creating an online video platform. I'm not gonna talk about 90% of those things. Instead, I'm gonna talk about that core 10% was probably more than 10%, but I wanna talk about the core one thing that you need to know about building a video sharing platform, and that's transcoding. A user is gonna come and try to upload an AVI file. They're gonna come and try to upload a WebM or an MOV from their iPhone or an MP4. There's just a bajillion different video encoding formats out there. There's a bunch of stuff that I don't even understand, nor do I ever want to have to understand it. But fortunately, there's a thing called FFmpeg, which is an open source program, if you will. It's a command line program. You can install this program yourself, Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever. Specify an input file and an output file. You can tell it what codec you want to use, what encoding you want to use for audio and video, and it'll spit out the file. You can actually specify resolution. You can downscale stuff from 4K to 720p if you want to. You can change the frame rate of something. You can do all sorts of different transformations on a video to make it better for online streaming because a lot of folks are gonna upload these huge 4K, maybe 8K videos, you never know. And that needs to be downscaled. You'll notice that YouTube actually allows you to play at 420p, 720p, 1080p, 4K. They convert the video to like four or five different formats that you can play. And the reason they have to do that is because there's a bajillion different devices. All these different devices have hardware acceleration that allow them to play at different resolutions, different performance levels. But the browsers themselves too, every browser supports different video formats as well. Anyway, I created this little prototype app where you could take a video, drag it here, it uploads, it transcodes the video. After a few seconds, once it's done, once it's done, it takes a minute because encoding videos is hard work. It takes a lot of processing, a lot of memory. But once it is done, then it's here and we can view it in the browser. So let's go ahead and look at some code to see what's actually going on here. I'm not gonna go over the front end too much. I just wanna go over one thing that's worth knowing. So what I'm using to actually render the video is the HTML5 video tag. Pretty self-explanatory. You could specify resolution and controls, autoplay, whether it's muted or not. But there's something down here called the source. Now, I'm only specifying one source, and that's MP4, because pretty much all browsers support that format. But in reality, you're supposed to specify, I think, WebM, as well as AUG. And this would give you like maximum coverage to make sure that pretty much any browser out there will be able to play your videos. But for prototyping purposes, MP4 is just fine because pretty much all the major browsers do play MP4. So let's talk about how I was able to convert these AVI and WebM files into MP4. The back end is rather simple. It's actually just three endpoints. One, I have this public endpoint for serving a static file. So it serves static files from the transcoded directory. This transcoded directory contains all the final transcoded files. All of these are gonna be in one format and that's gonna be x264 mp4 files at 720p and it also contains thumbnail images for each one of these which i'll explain in a minute how that was created in production you generally want to be careful because if these are public files then maybe it's okay but if they're private files then there's just extra things you're gonna have to do to make it more secure i have this other endpoint for uploading a file pretty simple i use the molter middleware with express and it uploads the file but then it does this transcode file thing which i want to jump into i have this other endpoint called videos which basically just reads all the files in this transcoded directory and returns a nicely formatted list of videos which i could actually show you 
So here's what that video's payload actually looks like. It gives us the URL, the title, and then the thumb URL. It pretty much just generates all of this from the original file name. There's nothing magical going on. There's no database, no persistent storage aside from the actual files being uploaded. Once again, for prototype purposes, what I really want to get into is this transcode video file. That's where the core guts of this thing actually exists. So I'm sending it a file name and a file path. These refer to the original uploaded file. We're using a library called Fluent FFmpeg. This is a very popular Node.js library, about 6,000 stars. It allows us to interface with FFmpeg by using these chained methods. And so what I did here was I took our input, I set the video codec to X264, which pretty much any device supports that format. Set the audio codec to lame MP3, kind of an old school MP3 codec that once again, pretty much everything supports. I set it to 720 by something. What this will do is it'll set the width to 720 and then automatically figure out the height to maintain the original aspect ratio. So then once it's done encoding this X264 MP4 file, then it creates a thumbnail, right? Because in the browser, we need to be able to see an image. And this isn't just going to magically pop up. This comes from somewhere. We have to generate this ourselves. So fortunately, FFmpeg will do this. We can give it an array of timestamps. It could actually generate multiple thumbnails throughout the video if you want. I have it generating one thumbnail at 10%, just because that's probably where the action starts. I have it sending that image to the transcoded directory where the videos are and specify a resolution of 720p. What's kind of really cool about this, this combination of using FFmpeg with the Fluent FFmpeg library, is that in less than 20 lines, I'm able to create an encoded or transcoded version of the video and also create thumbnails for that video. And it just works. Now, this might seem like an oversimplification of what's actually going on. FFmpeg is a crazy complicated software. It's doing a whole lot of stuff on the back end in order to encode our video. And we don't have to worry about that. In order to get Fluent FFmpeg to work, it needs the FFmpeg binary to be present on the system. So there's two ways to go about this. One, there's a node library called FFmpeg static, which contains static binaries. Yeah, a lot of people are using the software and a lot of people trust it. So it's probably okay. Personally, what I do is I have this node Docker file and I'm building the image myself and installing FFmpeg through apt. So apt install FFmpeg. This will install it from the Ubuntu repository. And that quickly and easily, I was able to get FFmpeg working. But this only works because I'm running it in Docker. Um, now, if I were running a Linux machine, I suppose I could do this directly. But when you think about distributing an app, right, I want this thing to work the same locally on my machine as it will work in QA and production. And also if another person works on the same project, I want it to work for them. So that's why I like the idea of installing this inside of Docker like this, because it means that FFmpeg is packaged alongside my code and it makes it easy to distribute this app and deploy it to different platforms. Now, when we're talking about deploying things and scaling up. In reality, I probably wouldn't take this approach of running Node and FFmpeg on the same uh, container or the same machine, if you will. In reality, you can create a separate worker service that only handles encoding videos. Eventually, that's not gonna be enough. You're gonna wanna scale that up to multiple instances of that same worker. So you just go from one instance to three, 15 instances, who knows? And that's going to help, but that's also going to get pretty expensive. So there's so many solutions you can do. I mean, I don't even want to think about what YouTube does in order to handle the scale that they have to handle. You do start to run into some interesting challenges, though, when you want to scale. Um, sounds fun, but also sounds like a nightmare, a very expensive nightmare. So yeah, some of these videos come from my iPhone. Some of them I just grabbed from the web. Some of them were stock videos and no matter what, FFmpeg was able to handle it. So yeah, this was a fun little project. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. So if you liked the video, please like and subscribe and support a little YouTuber like myself. And thank you for watching.